So we're here again. Welcome to the center of Cuenca in Parque Calderon, named after this guy right here, Abdon Calderon. And today we're going to talk about the independence of Ecuador from the Spanish as we take a little walk around to some uh, historical uh, as we take a little walk around to some historical spots in Cuenca and eventually we're going to come back and we're going to talk about this guy cuz he is very important to the independence of Ecuador but first let's go take a little walk come along before we do that, I just want to say real quick thank you very much for watching the video. Click the like button and the subscribe button and leave a comment down below. It's free, it's easy, and it will help the channel grow and help this content reach other YouTube viewers. Alright, back to the video. As we walk away from the plaza, or Parque Calderon, you can see the, the uh, towers of the cathedral behind us. We're walking west here, and we're going to head out to a... Uh, a pretty important uh, landmark in the history of independence here and the independence story is basically like uh, it's pretty similar to the independence story of a lot of countries in South America in the wake of the Napoleonic Wars in the early 1800s right around 1820 uh, there were a lot of uh, internal revolutions in different areas of Ecuador just like there were in different areas all over South America. And uh, basically because of the weakness of the Spanish Empire, so the weakness of the Spanish Empire led to internal revolutions. And one of them right here in Cuenca, they actually declared in 1820, the Republic of Cuenca, like an independent, almost like city-state republic. And we're gonna actually go over to Plaza San Sebastian, which is uh, very important because it's like the place, more or less, where the, uh, where the Republic of Cuenca was declared. Now, I will give you a little spoiler here. The Republic of Cuenca did not last very long. Um, the Spanish having, uh, having survived, the Spanish Empire having survived the uh, Napoleonic Wars, even though they were weakened, they, like they did in other countries in South America, sent military forces to quell the uprisings, and they did that here for sure in Cuenca. But let's head over there first, and uh, we'll continue once we get there. So we're here in the Plaza, Plaza de San Sebastian. San Sebastian, and this is uh, a plaza that's out to the west, just on the western edge of the central historical district here in Cuenca. And it's important because this is the place where was first declared the Republic of Cuenca in 1820 in November. Now, it all sort of centers around uh, a guy named Tomas Ordonez. And at the end of the year of 1820, uh, independence movements and battles for independence were sort of sweeping across Ecuador. In October of 1820, Guayaquil had uh, secured independence from the, Spa from the Spanish. And so here in November, um, in the beginning of November, Ordonez, who was like a militiaman, uh, revolutionary, patriot, whatever you want to call him, basically a military man who was fighting for the independence of Ecuador from the Spanish, he uh, devised a plot. And now after having tried um, at least once to, uh, to raise uh, troops, you know, to, to overthrow the Spanish garrison here, um, he devised a plot with the mayor, the constitutional mayor of Cuenca, whose name was Jose Maria Vasquez de Noboa. I think I got that right. And basically, Noboa was going to uh, publish some royal orders that had come from the Spanish. Now, in that day, in 1820, of course, if you need to publish something, you're literally like taking it to a place, you know, like in the center of the city and 
you know, putting it up on a board so that everyone can see it. And in order to do that in these troubled times, they would need a military escort. So they had a military escort and on the way, Ordonez, along with, I believe, nine other militiamen, uh, they ambushed the convoy and fought very briefly with the Spanish military men and uh, the Spanish soldiers and were able to disarm them and um, basically, like, uh, you know, take their weapons and, and secure the Spanish royal order so that they were not published. And they later, after that, later that day, came here to Plaza San Sebastian. Now, word had spread about the fight, and Ordonez was actually wounded during the fight. He was stabbed in the leg with a bayonet. But he came here with his other militiamen, and he was limping around, and there was a huge crowd gathered of citizens of Cuenca. And here he pro proclaimed the uh, independence and the uh, formation, basically, of the Republic of Cuenca, the independent Republic of Cuenca. And uh, it didn't quite end there. The Spanish had more troops than just those, you know, that small uh, escort. And they attempted to retake the city, but um, Ordonez got word out to neighboring towns. The neighboring towns sent militias here, and after a brief fight of a few days, the Spanish retreated, they left the city, and uh, in the middle of November, I think on November 15th, they actually drafted a constitution. It was um, approved by the city council, and it was approved by Mayor Noboa, and officially the Republic of Cuenca was born. So the Republic of Cuenca lasted just a few days more than a month. And uh, in, in December, the Spanish had a large unit of about 600 troops that were marching down and on the outskirts of the city of Cuenca. And they were met by about a thousand militiamen um, and in a, in a town called Verde Loma, which is like north of the city here in Cuenca. And the militia was soundly, soundly defeated. Uh, they were inexperienced, they were not very well armed, and they took horrific losses and were forced to, they were scattered and forced to retreat, um, which sort of opened the door for the Spanish to march into Cuenca and retake the city, which they did. And uh, after a, a year of, um, of pretty brutal repression here by the Spanish, eventually uh, the army of Gran Colombia, president of Gran Colombia, the famous liberator uh, Simon Bolivar, but the army of Gran Colombia under the control of Antonio Jose de Sucre, they began to liberate different cities here in Ecuador and eventually made their way here to Cuenca and liberated the city in February of 1822. And from there, the army of Gran Colombia marched north, uh, pursuing the Spanish north, until eventually uh, defeating them at the Battle of Pinchacha, uh, Pinchicha, which is just outside of, um, of Quito, up in the north. And that actually brings us back to Abdon Calderon. So, to talk about that, we're going to head out back to uh, Parque Calderon in the center of the historical district here in Cuenca, and we can finally talk about Abdon Calderon. So we're back. We're back here, right out in front of the statue of Abdon Calderon, where we started the video, and now it's time to talk about the guy. Abdon Calderon. Who is this guy? Well, he is a hero of the independence, the War of Independence in Ecuador. He was born right here in Cuenca. And his nickname, they know him as the, the Boy Hero. Why? Well, because uh, when he died in the War of Independence, in the Battle of Pinchicha, which is like the uh, culminating battle uh, for the War of Independence for Ecuador, he was 17 years old. He was going on 18. When he joined the army, 
uh, to fight against the Spanish. He was like barely 16 years old in 1820 when he joined. And when he died in 1822, like I said, he was 17 going on 18. And why is he, uh, why is he famous? Why is he important? Well, when the Battle of Pinchicha happened, which is, uh, Pinchicha is like a volcanic, uh, volcano, a volcanic mountain up north next to Quito. And uh, Abdon Calderon at the time was a lieutenant and he had been promoted up to the rank of first lieutenant. He commanded, uh, I believe, like a battalion size group. Um, I think maybe, maybe smaller, I'm not sure. I don't really know military size, unit sizes, but he was commanding a group of soldiers and um, he, the, the legend is that he, uh, that he like was wounded several times during battle and he, he maintained, you know, a hold on the, uh, the flag of independence of the army of independence and he even holding it like with his teeth as he continued to move forward in battle, which is a little bit exaggerated, but I mean, not too much. The real story is apparently the guy was wounded several times, several gunshot wounds during the battle, and he continued to move forward into the line of fire and encourage all of his troops to move forward as well, which is very important, of course, for an officer, because you're not just out there fighting by yourself. You have to encourage your troops to move forward even though they're being fired on and even though they're dying left and right. And he did this until eventually he fell and uh, his, his troops sort of like made a, a makeshift stretcher. They got him out of the, off the battlefield and they got him off to, uh, to like an aid camp off the battlefield. And he was still alive. He lived actually for another about two weeks but eventually um, he died, and not from his gunshot wounds, but from dysentery, which is something, unfortunately, that happens in war, especially back then. Most of the people that died, they died of disease. Um, so when he did die, he was actually, um, after his death, recognized by Simon Bolivar, the leader of uh, the president of Gran Colombia and he was recognized and promoted after his death posthumously um, promoted to the rank of captain and like to this day he's still recognized um, in the unit because the, the military unit still exists that he was commanding and he's like still recognized I think like every year um, they recognize his uh, like his contribution on the uh, anniversary of the Battle of Pinchicha, which is May 24th. So on May 24th, it's actually a holiday here in, uh, in Ecuador. It's a national holiday, May 24th, the day of the Battle of Pinchicha. And that's the story of Abdon Calderon, right here. Abdon Calderon, the boy hero. So, because he was born here in Cuenca, they've named, I believe in the 20th century, they named the square here which used to be Plaza de Armas, but is now Parque Calderón, and they named it after this guy, Abdon Calderón. So after the Battle of Pinchicha, which um, freed Ecuador from the Spanish, final, the final culminating battle of Ecuador and independence from the Spanish, Ecuador actually became part of Gran Colombia, the, uh, the nation under President Simon Bolivar, libera the liberator Simon Bolivar, and uh, Gran Colombia, giant nation, and, uh, comprised of uh, modern nations today of Venezuela, Colombia, Ecuador, and Panama, but even that was short-lived because, uh, like we mentioned in a lot of videos before about um, about independence movements and wars for independence here in South America, they were not clean-cut. And after the Spanish were ejected from the Americas, uh, there was a huge power vacuum. And in pretty much every country, there were long periods of civil war and wars between new nations, uh, internal strife and uh, border disputes and things like that. Now, of course, that's not unique to South America. That happened in North America as well, you know, after the American uh, 
uh, war, the Revolutionary War. The United States fought a second war a few decades later, the War of 1812, against the British and the British Canadians. They fought a war against Mexico in 1848 and uh, fought their own civil war in the 1860s, the bloodiest war in the history of the United States. So it's definitely not unique to South America, but it definitely happened here. And Gran Colombia was actually in a war with Peru like six years after the uh, war for independence here in Ecuador. And that war actually, the fighting re um, uh, was over territory in Bolivia and Ecuador here. And the fighting made its way all the way up right to the outskirts of Cuenca. And only in the aftermath of uh, Simon Bolivar's death and the fall and dissolution of the Gran, uh, Gran Colombia in 1830, only then did Ecuador become sort of the modern Republic of Ecuador that it is today. Now, of course, the fighting didn't end there either. Um, countries were still had border disputes and, and fought with each other for decades, even centuries. I mean, Colombia and Peru fought a war in the 1930s. And the border disputes between Ecuador and Peru were only definitively settled in 1998. So when you think of it, the Republic, the formation of the Republic of Ecuador started back in like 1820 and the wars for independence sort of culminated and finished in 1830 and they only really defined their borders with their neighbor Peru in 1998. So, decided to uh, come over here to the eastern part, like the eastern edge of uh, the historical district. We are in Plaza or Parque uh, San Blas. It's a beautiful park. There's a church on the other side here. Some street vendors here set up selling stuff. Nice fountain in the middle. And why did I decide to come here? Well, not because this, uh, this park has any like real significance to the battle for independence, but if you look over here past these uh, street vendors, this street, Right here, this, as the plane flies over, this street right here is Simon Bolivar, named after Liberator Simon Bolivar. And the street down there at the traffic light, that street is named Tomas Ordonez, who we remember from, uh, from the Republic of Cuenca. The, man who sort of lit the uh, the fires of the uh, of Ecuadorian independence movement. And if you actually go another block up that way, there's a street, Gran Colombia, of course, which Ecuador was part of for, uh, for you know, almost a decade. And back this way, one more block is Mariscal Sucre, named after the famous Venezuelan general of Gran Colombia, Antonio Jose de Sucre, who uh, led troops to ultimately to victory in the Battle of Pinchicha up by Quito in Ecuador. So I think it's a fitting place to end our video about Ecuador's independence right here in Plaza or Parque sunglass so I hope you enjoyed the video uh, I find these things really really interesting I know not everybody does but it's interesting to me to see how a long 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 period of fighting um, over the years led to the current borders and the current political situations in all of these countries here in South America and the story here in Ecuador especially here in Cuenca because of the one month long Republic of Cuenca, independent Republic of Cuenca. Um, I think the story here is very interesting. So, I um, hope you enjoyed the video and stay tuned because we're definitely going to have more videos coming from here in Cuenca and from here in Ecuador. So, uh, stay tuned for that and we'll see you in the next one.